Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to this video tutorial on using the I.O. plugin for external hardware processing and hybrid mixing in Logic Pro 10. In this video, I'll show you how to use the I.O. plugin to process your audio tracks with external audio hardware like EQs and compressors. This plugin basically works like an effects send or insert that you can send signal out of Logic into an external unit for processing and then send that signal back into Logic to be captured and monitored on the track. It's basically like using hardware like a plugin. I should mention though that if you're looking for how to use external MIDI gear like a hardware synth with Logic, this is not the right video for you. This specifically has to do with using audio processing units like EQs and compressors. In this video, we're gonna use a Manly Veramu compressor to compress some lead vocals and drum room mics in tandem with my Focusrite interface. So at this point, I'll cut to some iPhone video where I explain how the wiring and patching works. All right, so what we're working with uh, today is we're working with um, my main audio interface. It's a Focusrite uh, Sapphire 56, a Liquid Sapphire 56. Um, that is going to be the device that outputs um, signal from Logic and also inputs the signal back into Logic. And then for compression, we're using, going to use this uh, Manly um, Stereo Veramu uh, compressor. It's a great compressor. Um, we're going to use it. We're going to use just one of the channels on vocals, and then we're going to use um, use it. We'll also use it in stereo for. Uh, something else, maybe like the the drum overheads or the drum room mics or something. So let me just explain how the um, the wiring works in the back. Let me just flip this around. So my audio interface, the the Focusrite, has uh, eight uh, microphone inputs. That's the T um, the TRS or not the TRS, the XLR jacks. Those accept mic level signal from a microphone, um, and then it has um, eight TRS inputs. They're sort of like quarter-inch jacks, and those accept uh, line-level inputs. But these aren't your normal like TS jacks. These are TRS jacks because they have a tip, a ring, and a sleeve. So you see those two uh, black spacers. There's a tip, a ring, and a sleeve. So these are meant for balanced connections, balanced line-level. Um, connections, not not something like an instrument cable. Instrument cables are only TS. They have a tip and a sleeve, and they're unbalanced. Um, and maybe I'll do a video later and explain the difference between balanced and unbalanced. But for now, just know that I have eight line level inputs. I also have ten line level outputs. There's the main two that are meant for the speakers, and then eight additional. So basically, I can use all eight of these, I can't use these because they're gonna be they're gonna be used for my speakers, but I can use all eight of these to use the IO plugin in Logic to route signal out of Logic and then back into Logic. So I can actually have simultaneously eight different IO plugins running in mono, and then I can have the signal go back to all these, um, basically return back to those. So we're creating sort of like an effect send and return. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect output three and that's gonna go to input one on the Manly. And we're gonna take output one from the Manly and return that back to line input three. So three is going to the Manly channel one and then back to three. Same thing uh, with channel two. We're gonna take um, output four out of logic into channel two on the Manly. The output of channel two in the Manly is gonna go back to and put four on the focus right. So we're creating like this sort of effects loop where if we pass signal through uh, output three, it's gonna go through the manly and come back to three and likewise four will do the same and we can also use them in stereo that way. Now, you can do it this way where you've got, you know, you've got everything sort of hardwired in in the back of, uh, you know, in the back of the gear, but really the way most professional studios are doing it, and even good home studios are doing it is with a patch bay. You just connect all of your gear every single output and every single input of all of your gear to a patch base. So that, that, that way in the front of your rack, you can patch everything together. That's the same thing I do even in my home studio. So um, I just wanted to give you guys um, a simple example just to show you what's going on in the back, uh, in the back here. In the, in the back of my rack normally, 
every single one of my mic line uh, and line outputs are all um, hooked up to the patch bay as well as the both the manly ins and outs. And therefore, you can just patch them in from the front of the patch bay rather than having to do it this way. But if you just have one piece of gear you're working with, um, like we're doing today, uh, there's really no need to have a patch bay. All right, so we'll get back into logic and I'll explain how to set this up. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the Manly to compress these lead vocals. Uh, these were recorded with no EQ or compression, so no effects whatsoever on input. There's also no effects plugins on the effects insert in Logic. So let's take a listen to what this sounds like in the mix. One of these days I will finally give in, but today is not. Okay, so that's very dry, very boring. Uh, what we want to do is we want to thicken up the lead vocal quite a bit so it stands out in the mix better. So to do this with our I.O. plugin, we're going to add it on an insert by going to uh, Utility and then I.O. You'll also see that there's a mono and stereo option. Uh, for this, because it's just a mono vocal track, we'll use the mono setting, which means we'll only be using one channel on the Manly. So the I.O. plugin is pretty simple. It basically allows you to output signal off the track to one of your interface's physical outputs and then allows you to receive process signal back into one of its physical inputs. Earlier, I already set up three and four as an output and input on my focus right. So for this mono vocal, I'll output on three and input on three to send the signal to channel one on the manly. I'm also going to avoid using one and two as an output because that's where my main uh, signal to my monitors is going. You can also adjust the output and input volume so if the signal going to or coming from your hardware isn't loud enough or is too loud, you can add or reduce gain. There's also a latency detection option. If you click the ping button, it sends a short pop through the signal path and extrapolates what the total round trip latency is to send the signal out of the digital to analog converters and then back uh, through the hardware and then back into the analog to digital converters. So for us, there's 36 samples of latency and Logic has offset that latency by basically adjusting the playback by 36 samples so that our vocals don't fall out of time with the rest of the song. So let's give this a listen. Uh, normally what you do is you take some time to dial in a setting that sounds good. I already dialed this setting in in advance and I know it sounds good. So let's give this a listen. One of these days I will finally give in. But today is not that day. I work too hard just to give up now. Your words mean nothing. Awesome, that sounds a lot thicker and fuller, and the dynamics seem to be even and leveled out quite a bit. Uh, not to mention that the Manly has four tubes per channel, so we're getting a nice little analog warmth on the vocals as well. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to print the process signal from the Manly down to a new mono audio track. You could just keep this right here and bounce the mix in real time, uh, and you'd be fine, but we want to reuse the Manly for something else. So one way we could print the signal onto this new mono audio track is to just make the input input 3, just like the I.O. plugin is inputting. However, when you do that, it doesn't take into consideration the latency compensation on the I.O. plugin. So we're actually going to do this a different way, which I'll get to in just a moment. Uh, also, I want to add a bit of EQ to the signal before the manly, just to brighten up the high end a bit and also scoop out uh, some of the sub low end. So I'm just going to put a high pass filter at about 40 hertz and a little high end boost around 10k. 
So now all we have to do is make the output of our main vocal track bus one and make the input of the print track bus one as well. You can actually use any bus you want as long as it's not being used for something else. Just keep in mind that you may want to also option click the fader of the main vocal track to make it unity gain again, otherwise the bus will print the volume reduction from the fader as well. So now all we have to do is arm our print track and hit record. All right, that sounds great. Next, let's compress the drum room mics with the Manly and use the IO plugin in stereo mode this time uh, so we can actually use both channels on the Manly. One thing I really like to do with the drum room mics is really squash them with some heavy compression to bring out the tone of the room. I'm also gonna add a little low end boost and a slight high end boost with EQ. And also because the track is stereo this time, we'll use both three and four as the output and input. Off screen, I hit the ping button to detect the latency. It was the same as last time, 36 samples. I also took a few minutes to turn on the stereo link mode on the Manly, as well as tweak the settings quite a bit. I also switched from the compressor mode to the limiter mode to really hit the room mics hard. So let's print down this signal the same way we did with the vocals. But today is not that day. I work too hard just to That's great, the room mics really have some nice warmth and body to them now. All right, so before I wrap up the video, there are a few things uh, I want you to take into consideration. Uh, number one, outboard or out of DAW processing isn't for everyone. It takes quite a bit more time and effort to process audio this way. Uh, but in my opinion, certain key instruments like vocals really benefit from running through a great tube or even a great solid state analog compressor. Uh, number two, Small studios and home studios really aren't going to have the amount of hardware that pro studios will, but it doesn't mean you can't still hybrid mix like a pro. If you invest in a few key pieces of analog gear, you can really get some great hybrid analog and digital tones. You just print the signal down after it's processed like I showed in the video, and then reuse the piece of gear for another track, and then repeat. Uh, number three, I generally try uh, to record uh, with analog EQ and compression on input. So that means that the mic goes into the preamp, the preamp goes into the EQ, and the EQ goes into the compressor, and then the compressor finally goes into Logic, into my audio interface. Um, but a lot of my clients record their own music and don't use any sort of analog processing. They're going straight from mic to audio interface. So using the IO plugin, either in Logic or Pro Tools, yes, Pro Tools has the same thing. The IO plugin is a great way to utilize your hardware after recording. Number four, you may find that Logic's latency compensation isn't always 100% correct when you print the signal to a new track, although I haven't had any issues playing it back live. In the past, I've sometimes had to nudge the printed signal over a few samples to match the original signal. This is particularly an issue with multi-track recordings like live drums. However, if your vocal track is three samples off, you're probably not going to even notice it. And finally, number five, you can use this for mastering too. I get a lot of clients who just want their music mastered. They like the sound of their own mix. Uh, instead of just having one piece of analog gear in line, I'll have like two or three hardware units in the chain uh, to give the music an analog vibe and warmth and then use that in tandem with plugins to achieve a nice balance between the analog world and the digital world. 
So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.